hearing aids without a prescription. The FDA says it's cutting red tape by creating a new class of hearing aids that do not require a medical exam, a prescription, and other specialty evaluations. Instead, the devices will be sold online or over the counter at pharmacies and other retail stores. Dr. Amit Gozalia is an audiologist, and let me just ask you, who is the best candidate for something like this? And explain, what is an over-the-counter hearing aid? Thank you, Susan. Good morning. Uh Number one, you know, there's there's over 35 million Americans with some form of hearing loss, as you mentioned, uh, not only mild to moderate, even disabling hearing loss. So over the past numerous years since hearing aids have uh, uh, first started, actually, we've had regulations in the country where if you have a hearing loss, we prescribe and fit a specific hearing aid to you. There's been a process. There are rules and regulations in place mainly for patient safety. Uh, in 2017, the uh, bipartisan bill in Congress came out asking or dictating the FDA oh, yeah. to develop language for over-the-counter hearing aids, which really are only meant for folks who have a perceived mild to moderate hearing loss, as you mentioned. You have to be over 18 years old or older to be able to use these devices, and you can't have any medical contraindications, which I'm happy to go over in a few minutes as well. All right. So... Some people might not even know that they could benefit from a hearing aid, right? I mean, they, they, would they even know that they're missing out? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, there's numerous signs of hearing loss. You know, when we see our patients here at West Valley Hearing Center, number one, our patients will say, I have trouble understanding people, especially when there's noise around. Or the family members will say the TV volume is a little louder than everyone else needs. Or the patient says, you know, I've noticed this ringing in my ears and my ears feel plugged up. These are, all, these are some of numerous side effects or symptoms. The perceived hearing loss is something that you know, it's a little harder to define. If you don't have a medical evaluation or a hearing evaluation, it's very difficult to perceive or at least say that, hey, I have this mild to moderate hearing loss. And I can tell you with most of our patients that we see, a lot of them who are dragged in by family members will tell me, I have good normal hearing. And then we find out they have a severe hearing loss. Mm -hmm. So out of the millions, you know, the 37 million Americans with hearing loss, uh, I think it's about 30% uh, is is the number that we talk about that have adopted and, and gone into using hearing aids. So, you know, over-the-counter hearing aids is actually a good thing. And I think that's something that I want to make very clear is that most audiologists around the country, the medical community, you know, I've worked with ENTs around the country, we're actually in support of this. And I think part of the uh, question is patient safety. Right, so uh, we had a meeting with the White House last week, it unfortunately got canceled last second. But the idea was we wanted to change the language to really reduce the amount of volume or what we call the output coming out of these devices so that you don't damage your hearing. And the great thing is the White House pushed the language back to the FDA and the FDA last second actually reduced that ceiling so that we're not damaging patients hearing. But I think the overall message uh, of patient safety, the second message is that this is actually a good thing. I think the increase in access and the reduced, uh, uh, reduced costs of these devices because I think some of the barriers to getting hearing aids are number one, access, which we're working on. Uh, and number two is cost. Number three is stigma. So if we can reduce the cost portion and the access, then sure, more people can get the help they need. Is this kind of like picking up a pair of uh, magnifying glasses or readers, you know, where you just go into a store and try it on until it, it feels right for you? Yeah, you know, it's funny. We, we've been using that example and I hear patients give that example to me. Eyes and ears are very, very different. You can put on a pair of cheaters and say, okay, or readers, excuse me, or cheaters, whatever you call them. <laughs> you can actually put them on and say, okay, I can see a lot better and off you go. But I think if you talk to any optometrist or any ophthalmologist, they know that that's not the permanent solution, but it's a temporary solution. The way the auditory system works is there's a lot of retraining involved. So if you think about uh, children learning new things, they learn it very quickly. And as we get a little bit older, and I'm not picking on age, but you know the old phrase, don't teach an old dog new tricks, is because our brains take a little bit longer to adapt to new uh, uh, processes and ideas. So with hearing devices, we know that over 50% of adults over 75 and older have disabling hearing loss. And if you go into a place and you buy a hearing aid and it doesn't work for you, 
we're hoping that these people will take the next step and go see an audiologist to get their hearing evaluated versus just trying a bunch of these devices, spending hundreds and even thousands. Some of these devices that are over the counter cost thousands of dollars where you could buy a prescription hearing aid from you know, an audiologist like us for less than $1,000 each. So uh, yes, there's a benefit, but I, you know, again, the, the take home message has to be patient safety. All right. Dr. Amin Kozlalia, thank you for joining us this morning. Thank you. All right, we're going to turn now to Rick Dickert, find out more.